Before we get started showing how to apply the pretreatment and polymer to remove water spots from your Dobsonian or Newtonian style mirror, I wanted to show you how to protect your collimation dot. This particular mirror doesn't have one because it's, it's a demo mirror for us, but uh, the way to do it is you can take something as simple as a lens cap uh, or something else similar to that. You can put a little polymer on the lip of the cap. Use your, use your first contact polymer. Put some on there, let it dry, and then just set your cap over the collimation dot. That will seal against the mirror and allow the polymer and pretreatment to be applied over it. And it won't get into your collimation dot and it won't remove your collimation dot, which has happened to some of our customers when they didn't protect the collimation dot before applying the polymer. And now we'll go on to the application process. So we realized one of the simple videos we haven't even posted yet is how to use the pretreatment and the polymer together when you have water spots on a Dobsonian or Newtonian style mirror like this. This is probably the easiest process, easiest item that uh, we you would have to use the pretreatment on. So let's just go ahead. We've got our water spot pretreatment and we're just going to apply a wet coat on it first and then just let it dwell for about 10-15 minutes. That's really all you need just to get the surface wet and to keep it wet. You don't have to flood it. Uh, it just has to stay wet to dissolve the water spots. And if during the 10 or 15 minutes you let it dwell, it starts to dry. Just apply a little bit more. And you can allow it to dwell for 30 minutes if you want, uh, especially if you've had a, a stubborn water spot that didn't come off on a previous application. Definitely allow it to dwell for 20 or 30 minutes. But uh, we're just going to let this dwell and we'll come back to it in, uh, in a few minutes. Okay, we've let this dwell for about 10 minutes. So what we're going to do now is because I didn't apply much on there, it's not pooling in the center, but if it does pool in the center, you can just uh, lift your mirror up and, and pour the excess off so that it doesn't take as much polymer to coalesce with the pretreatment. Mine didn't really pool in the center all that much. I just kept it lightly wet. So I'm just going to go ahead and apply my polymer right over it. And as you start spraying, get this right. This works best if on these little sprayers you find where the um, where the pickup tube is located and you put your spray head in in line with the pickup tube. I'm just going to start with the center and kind of moved outward and get an initial coat on there and you definitely don't want the pretreatment to dry. I think I said that earlier, but I just wanted to restate that. Don't let the pretreatment dry on the surface. And in this case, we're just going to continue to apply polymer till you can see these white areas go away, and that means the polymer and the pretreatment are coalescing. You may still see some a little bit of white area. That would be bubbles that are being created in the polymer as it's applied, but for the most part you'll be able to tell when the polymer is mixing with the pretreatment and the two materials are becoming one, one continuous coat. And the outside, because it wasn't, didn't have as much on it, that's working very fast. We'll just put a little bit more here in the center. You can see that it's white, looks white, but that's because there's a lot of, at this point, there's a lot of air bubbles in it. But you definitely want to make sure that the polymer and the pretreatment are fully mixed. Alright, I'm just going to leave that. It's starting to pool up in the middle now. I'm going to leave that for a few minutes and then look at it and see if I have to apply more pretreatment in, say, about another 10 minutes. Because all these white areas 
that you can see towards the center of the mirror, that should dissipate as the bubbles rise. But we'll look at it here and again in about 10 minutes and see what it looks like and see if I have to apply any more pretreatment, or excuse me, polymer. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes and the polymer and the pretreatment has coalesced together pretty nice. Uh, you can see it pooling in the center a little bit, but uh, we have only got one layer of polymer around the perimeter, so I'm going to have to put another wet coat around the perimeter so this will peel. So we'll do that now and then let it finish drying. Now notice I'm spraying from the center outwards again just to keep the, pre the polymer from uh, getting on the edge. Okay, that's two full wet coats on the whole thing. Uh, two is sufficient if you have just dust on your optic. But if you have fingerprints or something like that on there, you want to do three coats, at least three wet coats, to get that polymer time to dissolve fingerprints and other contaminants on it. So we're just going to let this uh, finish drying and then peel it once it's fully dry. It will take longer to dry because of the pretreatment, the water-based pretreatment. Uh, so we'll come back to it in about an hour and a half. All right, this has been drying for a couple hours now, and I'm coming back to it, and we will show it to you the surface of it now, and then we'll peel it. You can see here now that uh, the polymer is all dried and there's no white spots. There are some spots there, but those are bubbles from uh, when we sprayed the polymer. Caught a few of them in the, trapped a few of them in the drying layer. But no more pretreatment on it. It's all coalesced with the polymer and dried off. So let's just go ahead and peel it. We'll use a peel tab and, and like always, uh, when you peel these, one thing to be aware of is that if you put the polymer on the edge, and I've explained this in other videos, if the polymer rolls over the edge, think of this as a piece of tape. You can't pick tape up from the center, and neither can you peel the polymer from the center. You have to start at an edge. So if it's rolled over the edge, you have to make sure you're starting there. And I like to take the peel tab and push it down over a little bit to get the peel started. And there it started. Now you can see it. I'll bring this up a little closer so you can see this. You can see it's tearing there. And that's because the polymer has rolled over the edge right there. And, uh, and it's not peeling easily. So what you do is you can just get your fingers on it. Now it's coming up. You can just get your fingers on that and chase it around. And I'll just keep peeling this way. i got to get my fingers here. Get that to peel. Once you get it beyond the halfway point, it'll come right off. It's starting to tear here a little bit still. And you can see that's coming right off. And it's off. One other way I will show you is if before you start peeling it, you could take a razor blade or something like this and just go backwards around the edge of your mirror at a slight angle and just break that polymer layer at that edge and it will peel right off. Or you, you can go either way. You can go this way. You're not, there's, no, there's no coating there so you're not going to hurt anything and you can just cut that edge clean and it'll peel right off. And as always, if you have any questions, please email us. We're happy to answer any questions you might have. By the way, this is a new style lightweight mirror from Dream Aerospace Systems. These lightweight mirrors are the latest design used in modern applications. The whole mirror weighs perhaps about four pounds versus a 15 or 20 pound 10 inch mirror if it was solid glass.